Tron features dynamic threats due to its massive mana generation ability, rivaling combo decks while still sitting essentially in the control neck of the metagame woods. Versions like Blue-White Tron will typically kill the opponent with Sundering Titan. The 710 is huge and tends to have a more damaging effect on the opponent than the Tron deck, even when Tron is losing multiple lands. Remember, you are the one with a 3 turn clock in play, and you probably have a full on Tron down if you just spat out an 8. Any Mind Slaver is usually pretty bad for the recipient, but the Mind Slaver lock is essentially a game win, even if it would take practically 40 turns to finish the game. When you have Academy Ruins plus 12 more mana, including at least one blue source, you can lock the opponent completely down with Mind Slaver. You need 10 mana to play and sacrifice the Mind Slaver, and an additional 2 plus the Academy Ruins to put it back on top of your deck every turn. Therefore, when you have all this machinery and you successfully stick the Mind Slaver, you imply a win. Played correctly, the opponent never gets another turn, and by the very nature of your combination, you will never deck out. He's got Mountain and nothing to start. We don't have a Spell Snare, and against Mountain, I really don't want to bluff anyway. Mog War Marshal, the first of many. We play Draw Go, then he plays another Mog War Marshal. Didn't pay the upkeep on the first one. Ouch. Again, he doesn't pay the upkeep, just wants to keep his deck going. Okay, here is something worth countering. We've already got this particular Tron part, so we're just going to keep planes, which will help us pay for Wrath of God if we need to. Okay, Gifts Ungiven. We're going to look for Power Plant, Wrath of God, Crucible of Worlds, and Decree of Justice. I'm gambling that he doesn't want those white cards anywhere near our hand, but we don't need them anyway. We play Triskelion, he plays Goblin King. I don't actually want to take any more damage this game, and I don't care about my Triskelion given that I'm probably going to Wrath, so I just fire away here. And with our completed Tron, we go Mind Slaver. But his hand isn't really very good, so we can't really wreck him. Best we can do is play a War Chief, which is going to give us another card to eat with Wrath of God. We're going to Wrath, of course. Then we play 710. We actually lose more lands to the Sundering Titan here than he does, but remember, we have Crucible of Worlds. Plus, this puts him on two lands, and we know his hand is mostly three mana one ones. This is not the last Goblin Sharpshooter we're going to see this game. This land I'm playing untapped is probably a mistake. There isn't a whole lot he can do, and it's probably two points we don't have to invest. Maybe it's not that awful if he pulls Skirk Prospector. Spellburst is a doozy on this board. Uh, we're going to play Crucible and get an extra card. And just a turn or two after that mistake, he does have the Skirk Prospector. We're going to burst and buy back. He's all tapped out here, so it's no problem to burn the spell burst. The plan is to Oblivion Ring the other sharpshooter and then come in for lethal the next turn. And this attack is it. 710 to negative 1. So in the previous video, we saw how the Tron deck can perform the equivalent of surgery on a combo deck with sideboard cards like Tormod's Crypt, Chalice of the Void, and Vendillion Click. Now it's time to dial it back to 1995 and destroy the red deck with the classic Circle of Protection Red. We're literally just going to sit behind this circle until he can prove a way to get through it. Yada yada, still on 20. Yikes, Shattering Spree takes out our Azorius Signet. And it looks like he was softening us up for Blood Moon. But the plan is to just dig for more lands and counter spells. As long as we've got lands, we're in good shape. He's basically just trying to overwhelm the circle, so he needs more creatures than we have lands, or he needs us not have Wrath of God, something along those lines. So a second Blood Moon hits, which stinks, but on the other hand, we can operate our circle on colorless mana, so we're still okay. I honestly don't know what happened on this attack. I think my daughter was making valentines for her class and distracted me. I feel like I set up the shields, but apparently I just took 17. So I just have to be more careful and not take the last three. So we're going to play Chrome Mox here and remove Gifts Ungiven so that we can produce blue mana. This, along with the red mana that we can get from the Blood Moon, allows us to play Engineered Explosives for three. When we pop the explosive, that's going to take out a couple of his guys and of course the Blood Moon. This is going to also put Tron online, which is great for us, and the Mind Slaver on our hand. 
We're going to be coming up on a concession, but why does he concede? As soon as we get a hold of his turn, we're going to be able to eat all of his goblins with either Skirk Prospector or Click Slither. And we're still going to have mana that will allow us to defend with Circle Protection right on his remaining guys. We control his turn so we can make sure he doesn't attack us if we don't want him to. And we can make sure all of his mana is tapped every turn. Worst comes to worst, he's just going to deck out 44 turns from now. This time at least, I think it's safe to say that concession is the better part of Valor here. This has been Michael J. Flores. I hope you enjoyed it.